Throughout history, we, as humans, have used the power of our minds to achieve incredible and amazing feats. In reality, our minds are simply tools we use to create our thoughts. And the quality of our thoughts determines the quality of our experiences. A simple shift in perception will quickly and easily improve how you feel and what you believe is possible helping you to achieve all of your personal goals, even those that previously seemed unattainable. Join us now as we explore the vast landscapes of our minds. This is Mind Over Matter. Good evening, I'm Mitch Friedman and welcome to Mind Over Matter TV where we like to teach you different tools and techniques for you to overcome obstacles in your life, feel better and reach your goals. And we're going to do that tonight with a good friend of mine, Darshan Shanti, wrote an incredible book called The 24 Hour Champion. And Darshan has actually helped to change the lives of over 30,000 people, helping them to really create lots of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars in income and revenue. And we're not really here to talk about that today. We're here to talk to Darshan about his book, The 24 Hour Champion, Discovering and Living Your Priceless Life. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I love the book, so I'm really glad that Darshan's joining us tonight. And today what he's going to do is really to help us to figure out how we can overcome all those obstacles in our life, get to the core issues of what's keeping us from living more of a fulfilled life, more, more of our desires and getting more of what we want. So welcome to the show, Darshan. Well, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for having me, my friend. I yeah, appreciate it. It's my pleasure. I met Darshan in the store and he brought in his book. And first thing I did was read it. I love the title of it, The 24-Hour Champion. So tell us a little bit about what's significant about that for you, 24 hours. And I love the champion part of it too. So tell us what's significant about that. Being a champion 24 hours a day is what's significant about it. Being the best you can be, living your best life, taking on the day and making it your own. And also for the people who are struggling, it's about overcoming whatever you want, or being who you are and changing your life, transforming your life in as little as 24 hours. And that's the key. It doesn't have to take years and years and years of therapy and struggle and pain. You can do it in a day if you decide you want to. And that's the whole point about being a 24 hour champion. And the second part of the book, discovering and living your priceless life. The and is capitalized. Because if you're not going to live your priceless life, what's the point? And if you don't realize you're priceless, that's what's going to contribute to you not having the life you want. So it's about discovering who you are and living that way from this moment on. Yeah, excellent. I love that you talk about, because I know one of the first things out of people's mouth is, why does change have to be so hard? Why does it have to take so long? So I love that you talk about that. Well, we can do it in 24 hours. The first thing that needs to happen is to get rid of all those old beliefs and programming that's getting us to the outcome that we're not wanting. So the thing I loved about your book, well, there's a lot of things I loved about your book, but I love the synchronicity of how you put it all together in terms of chapters. So I love that the book starts off with belief systems and everything in it is so synergistic. If people follow the book and do the workbook as they're going along, you're absolutely right. Within 24 hours, you can do, be, and have anything you want. I agree. In fact, the do, be, and the have, that's so critical. Actually, it's who you are being. If you're being priceless, that will lead you to do things that a priceless person would do, and then you will have what a priceless person would have. So if you're being priceless, what would you do differently? And that's the question to ask everybody. It's a great concept, but what's the real reality? So most people believe they are worth less instead of priceless. So if you believe you're worth less, what will happen? 
you will live a worthless life. You will not take action, you will not take risk, you'll be afraid of failure, and you won't go for your dreams. But if you believe and you know with everything in you that you are priceless, and you take action on that, you do what a priceless person would do, well then you're gonna have what a priceless person would have. The success, the happiness, the joy, the satisfaction, the fulfillment, the freedom, the fun. You're gonna have whatever it is you say you want if you take responsibility for your pricelessness and let go of the belief system that you are worth less. So, you know, that's such a big point, and I really believe that that's it, is, is letting go of the belief system. But some people just don't know what that belief system is, you know. So tell us a little bit about how do we get there? How do we get to find out, okay, what is it that's in the way there? How do we get to those beliefs? That's the absolute best question, because unless we get to those beliefs, nothing's going to change. So, so thank you for that. How you get to those beliefs is two things. First of all, Look at the results you have, and if they're not the results you want, well, then you've got to do something different. Well, if you can't do anything different, if your belief system is something that's quote-unquote less than, so then you start asking yourself questions. You say, okay, I've said I wanted this, and all I have is this. What's the reason? So then the first levels of questions will get answered. Well, you say, well, I'm too tired, or... I don't have enough money or um, I've never done it before so I don't know how. Don't let yourself get away with those surface answers because those surface answers are not where the real core of it is. So you have to deal with a problem at its core. Deal with an issue at its core and then it doesn't come back anymore. And that's the whole point. So then all right, after you get past the first level, the surface level answers, what do you do? Well, what is it really? Well. Well, if I do it and I don't succeed, then what? Okay, good. Now that's the next level. So you're afraid that you may not succeed, which means that you're afraid that you will fail. Now, maybe that's the second or the third level, so you're afraid to fail. But let's take it even one step further. So here's the, the fourth level. So if you fail, what do you tell yourself about you? That's the key. Right. You tell yourself that you're not good enough, or you tell yourself that you're a failure, or you tell yourself that you're worthless or unnecessary or stupid. See, you have proof, proof that you're not good enough. And no one wants their core negative beliefs about themselves validated, and no one wants those beliefs challenged either. Because if those core negative beliefs are validated, and you really feel that you are worthless, life's not very fun in the moment. In fact, it's not worth living to a lot of people. Right. So they avoid taking the risks in the first place because they don't want those beliefs challenged. I ask people all the time, look, when you were in high school, was there ever a girl or a guy you wanted to go out with? That person was available and so were you. Did you ask the person out? Most people say no. And I say, well, why didn't you ask them out? And they say the number one answer is, Fear of rejection. And I say to them this, there is absolutely no such thing as a fear of rejection. Period. End of story. And they look at me like, are you crazy? What are you talking about? There's no such thing <laughs> as a fear of rejection. I said, would you like me to prove it to you in the next minute? And they're like, yes. <laughs> All right. So, and then now it goes back to what we just said. If you ask this person out and this person says to you, no way, and laughs, what do you tell yourself about you? Well, you do. I'm not good enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not handsome enough. I'm not sexy enough. Right. I'm not enough of something. So it goes right to those core belief systems that you have. And eventually, you see them for what they are. You know that person then saw them for what they are. So the internal beliefs are then validated by the external proof. And that really stinks because the mask has come off you can't hide anymore and so that's why we don't ask the people out because we don't want the core negative beliefs about ourselves validated so folks it's not a fear of rejection what it is is a fear of validation of the core negative beliefs you have 